Hello and welcome back to OmniTalk. It's June 22nd, 2018. We've got a lot of exciting things to get to this week, but first, I just want to commemorate our one year anniversary. Believe it or not, a year ago today, I was penning my first article in a coffee shop, Amazon and the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. And look at us now, we're coming to you live via video. I'm also excited to announce that just recently, I've signed on with Forbes.com to be a contributor for them. So in the coming weeks, we're gonna to start to experiment with a lot of different content across both the OmniTalk platform and the Forbes.com platform. So please let us know your feedback along the way. We really wanna hear your thoughts uh, on how things are looking. All right, let's get to the news. But before we do, the first thing I wanna highlight, of course, is our sponsor, Uberall. Uberall converts mobile sales through the power of location marketing across all of our retailers platforms. So contact Uberall today to maximize revenue across your locations everywhere. Okay, the big news this week is the incredible, incredibly sexy topic of sales tax. Now here's what you need to know. The Supreme Court uh, put down a landmark ruling just on Thursday saying that e-commerce retailers now have to pay sales tax. Now on the surface, you could think this is a big deal. For us here at OmniTalk, we're kind of like, mm, I don't really see the big whoop. All right, Amazon already pays sales tax. In reality, some of the bigger e-commerce players, Wayfair, Overstocks, people like that, they're gonna now have to start to pay sales tax. And that could be, it could be onerous for those guys in terms of recording the information and making sure you have the systems in place uh, to pay everything accordingly. Uh, it also could be a burden for third party sellers that sell on Amazon's platform. Some of the smaller guys that may not be equipped with those systems. But at the end of the day, you know who wins in this whole thing? It's actually Amazon, believe it or not. Like I said before, they already pay, pay sales tax. And yes, while it's hard for their third party sellers, What's gonna happen over time is things will adjust and you'll still have the plethora of third-party sellers on their platform, in their marketplace, doing business. And if Amazon does anything like we know they're accustomed to doing, they've probably been thinking about this, in my opinion, I don't know this for a fact, so don't hold me to it, but my guess is they've been thinking about this day for a while and I wouldn't be surprised if they have the software platform already developed to make this super easy for their third-party sellers to continue to business. In fact, it might actually make their platform even stronger and more profitable because now they can just literally say to third-party sellers, hey, why don't you come onto our platform? We've got a great network for you to reach a lot of consumers. Oh, and by the way, these hard things like collecting sales tax and all that, don't worry about that. We'll do that all for you. It's super easy. Just come on board. So again, Amazon stands to win. All right, second up, this was a really cool announcement as well. Google is investing in JD.com over in China. Now, JD.com is the second largest e-commerce player in China, just behind Alibaba. Why this is important? Because if you don't think Google's a retailer, well, in all actuality, they are. Google Shopping is essentially a marketplace the same as Amazon is a marketplace. And they're looking for third-party sellers just as Amazon's looking for third-party sellers. And so this deal is, an, is especially smart in the sense that now they get access to all the products that JD.com has as well as JD.com's fulfillment. Because Google understands that most of the product searches, at least in the United States, are starting on Amazon. So that's a big threat to both their paid search revenue for specific products, but also this whole marketplace idea or this idea of the virtual mall that we've talked about in episodes past really still hasn't taken shape, and so that landscape can still be carved up. Number three, Walmart announced, and actually opened this week, one of their new small format supermarkets out in China. What's really cool about this, it's incredibly tech forward. It's also done in partner with, partnership with an affiliate of JD.com. So you can see chi Chinese e-commerce uh, organizations are very much in the news lately and help, helping to decide what the platforms are for retail of tomorrow, which we'll talk about more in future episodes. But essentially what's cool about this, it's all predicated on scan and go, something that you know I believe very strongly in, but Walmart has partnered as well with WeChat to make mobile payments and self-checkout very easily through scan and go applications. And they're reporting that even though it's just opened uh, for a short time, 20% of all transactions are being done through scan and go. So expect this number to only increase. And while Walmart shuttered their scan and go program here in the United States, I'm very excited to see that they're still doing it over in China. And actually, they're even still experimenting it here, in, here with Sam's Club as well. All right, number four is a little bit off the beaten path, but of course, you'd expect that type of quirkiness from us here at OmniTalk. Number four is actually about Cirque du Soleil. Yes, that freak show out of Las Vegas, that gymnastics freak show. 
Cirque du Soleil has announced that in 2019 in Toronto, they're going to open up a new store called Creative. And again, this is all about experiential retailing. So you're going to have things like trampolines. You're going to have things like bungee cords. And of course, mask making. That's right, mask making. And I love this. Kudos to the mall developer and Cirque du Soleil for getting together on this partnership. I love ideas like this because it can show that one plus one really equals three. And I got to tell you, I wish there were more partnerships like this. For example, I would love Kindercare to get together with any retailer in the world because, oh my God, that would change everyone's life, especially if you have kids. All right, last but not least, Amazon finishing us out again. Amazon has decided, you know what? Selling us product in our homes is not enough. They're now going to get into our hotels as well. So they're now going to be part of our vacations and our work trips. Essentially, Amazon has released something called Alexa for Hospitality in partnership with Marriott. And so you'll walk into a Marriott, you'll find an Alexa in the room, and it's going to act like your in-room concierge through voice technology. Want to book a spa appointment? Talk to Alexa. Want to change the thermostat? Open the curtains? Talk to Alexa. My big question, though, what the hell else is Alexa listening to in that hotel room? Okay. That about does it. That about wraps us up. A couple of other announcements. I will be at the Economic Development Association of Minnesota Conference out uh, out next week at Grandview Lodge. If you happen to be there, please um, stop by and let's chat. Uh, Thanks again to Uberall. And of course, please remember to like or share this video on whatever social media platform you, you want. And I will say to my good buddy Carter, who basically is the human form of Alexa, hey, Why don't you play some mood music and take us on out of here. Be careful out there.